So thank you very much, guys. Uh, we start. Welcome. Uh, happy longevity day. Uh, we have this campaign for 10 years. I started it exactly 10 years ago in 2013. Um, in our peak years, we organized campaigns in uh, over 50 countries. Altogether, we hundreds of events, hundreds of promotions, uh, articles, meetings, uh, uh, online, offline. So I think uh, this kind of um, uh, campaign really helps to build the community and also helps us to reach out through this campaign. We reached out to um, also to, to some uh, more mainstream organizations, with German forces. So I hope this tradition continues. Of course, during the COVID, uh, not um, uh, it was basically not possible to uh, to um, have live meetings, but still we keep this tradition, and um, we will continue to keep it. Uh, let me just uh, give you a short presentation about uh, the things uh, that the Longevity Day is about, the things that we promote at ILA. Uh, so I share my screen. Uh, once again, please let me know if you see me or hear me. <laughs> uh, you know, we want uh, very advanced yes, technology. Yes, we can see you and hear you. Thank yes. you, thank you, Didier. So uh, our organization is called ILA, International Longevity Alliance. Um, uh, we promote longevity, health longevity. Basically, this means that we promote targeting aging as a medical condition because we understand that aging is the main risk or even the main cause of all chronic diseases. Um, so if we are able to uh, uh, treat aging, we will also be able to extend healthy life. That's the basic idea. And this idea should be clear to everybody, especially during. It. Yeah. it should be clear during the time of COVID that um, aging is really the main risk of disease. We see that um, COVID affects mostly the older people, uh, and um, if we really want to fight uh, COVID uh, pandemic or COVID crisis, we would also need to improve the underlying health of all the people. This is difficult. I cannot even I uh, uh, cannot even mute them. <laughs> that's that's how it works. All right. Uh, so um, uh, we advocated a lot for this connection between aging and um, and uh, COVID, and the need to address aging also as a means to uh, to fight COVID. Unfortunately, this idea was widely accepted, but we'll continue to advocate for it. And I would argue that. Um, it is because of this lack of um, uh, interest in underlying health of all the people, lack of interest in aging, that we didn't uh, do so well in uh, fighting COVID as well. Um, the life expectancy declined by almost two years during the last two years. And um, that's actually uh, 10 years of life expectancy progress lost in these two years. So uh, now we have to get back on track and at least uh, return to the level of 2019 and then resume our progress. So for us as longevity activists, it should just give more motivation to, uh, to intensify our promotion for health and longevity. And it's feasible. Everybody know, uh, here probably knows the main classifications of aging processes, for example, pillars of aging or um, uh, strategies for engineering and global senescence or hallmarks of aging. And for each uh, major aging process, there are uh, the proofs of uh, possibility to intervene and um, and to extend uh, life at least in animals, but now we have to move these studies to, to the clinic. We have to accelerate translation. Uh, one of the crucial tasks will be to develop evaluation criteria for aging biomarkers or aging clocks that will reliably predict not just aging health, but also effectiveness of anti-aging treatments. Uh, that will be the task of much future discussion. But of course, as advocates, as activists, uh, we are not only involved in science. ILA does uh, do some scientific work. We publish uh, papers uh, with ILA affiliation. But our main thing is advocacy, activism around the world at all levels, from the grassroots level to the uh, to the international level. Um, so that's that's our main uh, uh, unique uh, activity. And in advocacy, we mean, you know, just convincing people that uh, health and longevity is good. Just, you know, overcoming the the uh, the, uh, the biases, uh, the people who say that, you know, um, aging is natural, we should all die um, soon. So uh, we have to convince people that actually health and longevity is a good thing. Uh, we also have to argue with uh, all kinds of uh, 
uh, objections to health and longevity extension like overpopulation and boredom and loss of meaning. We know all those arguments, so we still need to convince people uh, who are not yet convinced. Of course, uh, we, 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 uh, we are great at convincing ourselves and our, um, and our audience. You know, the, we have the same people uh, for 20 years, but we need to learn to convince also people who are not yet convinced. I think we are uh, getting better. You know, um, I start, personally started this activism 20 years ago. You could even speak these things. You can say that aging is a treatable condition that it can extend life. You they'll throw you out of all the all the windows. Now it's it's much more mainstream, but still uh, we need a lot of people to convince. We also need to convince people about the economic benefit of health longevity extension. Uh, so uh, uh, there's a lot of, of um, advocacy work and and persuasion and education needs to be done. And who needs to be educated? Basically, everybody, the general public, uh, pharmaceutical industry, health insurance, regulators, everybody needs to realize the importance of aging. They need to extend health longevity. And that's what ILA does. Um, and that's uh, we, we all do, you know, individually. You don't have to join ILA or any other organization. And also, you don't have to wait for the government to take on this agenda. You can learn these topics. You can uh, discuss with others. Uh, you can uh, lead a healthy lifestyle. But um, uh, we believe that it will be more effective uh, to um, change policy by actual um, uh, organized advocacy through nonprofit associations. So right now, ILA has 34 nonprofit associations as federated members from 27 countries. Uh, some of them are more active, some are less active, but altogether we create a global movement uh, for health and longevity research and education. Um, so uh, Longevity Day, of course, is our hallmark campaign. Uh, that we have been doing for 10 years um, uh, now is, is one of the less less active campaign especially you know that uh, uh, some some people are locked out of zoom but you know at least in principle it was one of the widest uh, uh, pro longevity campaigns in history uh, we also organize uh, uh, conferences uh, by ila itself or also in cooperation with other organizations like healers uh, like uh, the, the bulgarian association for for instruments development uh, with the Italian Longevity School. Um, so we try to promote education uh, at every level uh, from the basic uh, to, the, uh, to the academic. And uh, already an announcement that uh, we'll have another conference in Israel on 26, 27 March uh, that will also be organized by ILA. Um, of course, we also provide educational materials uh, through our websites, through our uh, Facebook uh, presence, um, but of course the main strengths of ILA, I believe, you know, I've been tooting our horn, but it, it's true, you know, we did a lot of um, advancement in this, that's advocacy, uh, like um, talking to um, decision makers and convincing them that aging is important and addressing aging is important. Um, and what does it mean and practically here in Israel? Uh, we convinced uh, uh, the, the, the Knesset basically uh, through several meetings to include aging um, the treatment, uh, the prevention of age-related diseases, uh, health, longevity, research, development, and education into the Israel National Master Plan on Aging. As a result, there were issued some calls for research proposals, altogether about $20 million <laughs> longevity field. So that's the kind of thing that um, uh, VETEC Association or Israeli Longevity Alliance does as a part of ILA also as an example of what uh, can be done in advocacy. Uh, but also ILA does um, international advocacy. Um, for example, in 2017, um, ILA was instrumental to, uh, to include aging uh, into the WHO work program. Uh, you know, together with other organizations, we organized a massive campaign. Uh, hundreds of uh, people, organizations wrote to WHO and um, explained to them the importance of aging for global health. And they did include uh, this topic uh, into the WHO uh, work program until 2023. So that's one achievement uh, that where ILA was uh, very strongly involved. Another achievement uh, also thanks to Daria and uh, many other activists uh, from, uh, from ILA and not only from ILA, aging is now actually included as a medical condition into the international classification of diseases into the ICD-11 system. Uh, so now uh, we have aging, not just as one, but as two codes. Uh, it is not called a disease per se, but it is called, uh, first of all, uh, a set of general symptoms, uh, the so-called aging-associated decline in intrinsic capacity, 
or it is also uh, classified as, um, as a causality or as etiology uh, under the aging related code. So with both codes, you can actually treat aging as a medical condition according to ICD. Huge advancement in a large measure thanks to ILA and everybody who was involved. Uh, at least uh, we personally, we wrote to, to Knesset uh, 10 years ago and asked to recognize aging as disease. And there were many other initiatives like this. Uh, so altogether, uh, in about 10 years, we achieved it. It's the Renan CD. But that's just the first step. The next steps will be to develop evaluation criteria for aging. So actually, there will be actual uh, you know, um, guideline how to um, diagnose it, how to treat it, how to test the effectiveness of treatment. That will be the subject of uh, much future discussion. And ILA was also involved, um, and uh, our experts were also involved in, in, this, in this discussion. We published papers and uh, hope uh, we will continue to, to stimulate this discussion. But generally, uh, these are the kinds of activities we do at ILA and that we invite cooperation. And I hope that uh, together, thanks to all our efforts, uh, we will achieve our goals, health and longevity for all through scientific research. So uh, ourselves and our loved ones will benefit from health and longevity. And with that, I end my presentation. If there are a couple of um, questions, uh, we can also take. Uh, anybody wants to, to say something, raise a question? No questions? Great. Other than then, I'll, uh, I'll just say excellent presentation. Really looking forward to working with you. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Would be great if, if Zoom worked as well, but you know, we do what 